Hi everybody, uh, I'm coming to you from my office today where we're going to be talking about shooting interviews. Uh, we've already gone out there and we've shot a bunch of B-roll and we've tried our sequence shooting and now it's time to pull the people into our stories. Uh, obviously, as your chapter said, good sound can make the difference between an average story and a great one. That includes natural sound and it also includes interviews that you're going to do with your primary players because news is all about people. It's about issues that affect people. It's about issues, uh, ways in which their stories come to life within your storytelling. And so it's really important that you figure out how to shoot them well and uh, integrate them into your stories. So today we're actually going to be talking about the framing and the lighting and the various um, features of, of capturing that interview. Uh, later this semester we're going to be talking about the content in those interviews. So right now we're just talking about the technical side about how you gather that material. And so I'm trying to do this through Blackboard Collaborate for the first time as a direct record in here. So bear with me if I have a couple of moments uh, trying to pull up some supporting documentation. Um, one thing that I would say is one of the most important things when it comes to shooting an interview is make sure that we don't do anything in our framing, our lighting, the capturing of our sound that interferes with the audience's ability to actually hear what that person is saying because if they're distracted by the background, if they're distracted by the fact that you have too much headroom, you're seeing something like this, they're distracted by looking room, being in the wrong direction, um, they're going to be paying attention to those things and they're not going to be listening to the things that your uh, subject is saying. So we want to kind of practice with that a little bit. So uh, you're going to go out in the field this time, you're going to shoot shooting assignment number three, uh, which is strictly a head and shoulders interview. And we want to talk about the five different critical things that you need to be contemplating when it comes to that. Um, we need to think about framing. So a head and shoulder shot is about what you're seeing right now. Maybe if I push this back just a little bit, that might be a little bit closer. Thinking about it in terms of one finger, a little bit of headroom, one finger above the head, and down to about this part, you know, the breast line of the person that you're interviewing. So that's important. Uh, we want to think about looking room. So if you're working as a team, especially for the shooting assignment, you might have a reporter over here, and uh, or you might be working with your phone, and you'll be over here uh, while your phone is on a tripod. So we want to have the rule of thirds, uh, where two thirds of the frame is taken up by the person you're talking to, and about a third of the frame is taken up by the background. So if I turned a little bit like this, as if I'm looking to the person that I'm doing an interview with, I would want to make sure that I had the extra space in the direction that I'm looking at towards the reporter. So this would be a mistake. This would be correct. Uh, we don't want to have too much on uh, of looking room. We don't want to have a half and half frame. So make sure that we're making sure to capture both shoulders. We make sure that we can see both eyes. Those are really important. Uh, think about the background. We never want to put somebody in front of a window or a white wall. And in fact, if there's any wall involved, you want to make sure that it has things on it that aren't a terrible distraction or that um, you're shooting outside if possible. Uh, there are many different ways that you can do that to avoid um, having a big white wall behind somebody because that's really, really boring. What we really want is we want to have what we call depth of field, where the person is in the front in the foreground and you're going to focus on this part of their eyes. And they have at least six to ten feet behind them so that we can separate that person a little bit from the background. Um, that's that's an ideal situation. So uh, when you go outside, you have that nice sort of blurred ground, and then you have that sharp foreground because you focused here. Um, that's really good. Uh, you do also want to be careful about horizontal and vertical lines that might be coming up behind that person um, because that could also be a distraction. If there's a tree growing out of their head, for example, if I was framed like this, that might be a little bit of a confusion to somebody. You might also want to think about how that person is situated with multiple backgrounds. If you could kind of limit the amount of background that you have with that person so that people aren't too distracted by what they're seeing behind them, um, that would be really good. 
We always want to make sure that the camera lens is at eye level. So it, for example, I have my um, computer at this moment on top of about seven books so that I could get the computer up to eye level. That's true whether you're using your computer to do a Zoom interview or whether you're using our equipment and the JVC tripods. You want to make sure that you get that always up to eye level for, especially for this assignment. And once you prove that you understand uh, what the head and shoulders interview is like, you can move on. Uh, to some more creative things. But right now, I just want to see the meat and potatoes. Lighting. Uh, we want to make sure that the dominant light in the room is falling onto the face of the person that you're interviewing. So for example, if there is light coming in behind me, behind my head, that would be um, a problem because um, I would be backlit. And that's especially a problem if you're interviewing somebody um, who is African American, who has darker skin, and they have a light back and, and, and a darker foreground, you're going to want to make sure that you're providing the lighting to be falling on that person's face. And that's especially true uh, with the darker toned skin. So you want to make sure that you're contemplating how uh, who you're interviewing might impact how we're able to see them. And you also want to make sure that you're irising, again, right on this part of their face, not on the background, so that we can get a really good iris of their face. Um, and so dominant light falling onto the face. Um, and and making sure to iris on the subject space. Uh, be careful about baseball hats, uh, sunglasses. Um, if it's super, super bright outside and they have a really hard time and they're squinting and their face is all squinched up, well then yes, they can wear sunglasses, but it makes uh, them seem a little less believable sometimes because we like to see people's eyes whenever possible so that we can kind of decide whether we're going to judge them as telling the truth or not telling the truth. So um, think about that a little bit. Um, make sure that you're picking the right mic for the job. Uh, mic selection is really important. So if you are outside in a loud, loud environment, you're really going to want to use the stick mic, not the lavalier. The lavalier will pick up a whole bunch of sound. It's an omnidirectional mic, so it'll pick up nat sound as well as the person. If you're in a closed setting like an, like an office, um, then you could probably get away with using the lav. Uh, and then if you're using your phones, most of you don't have the clip add-ons right now for that. So you're just going to need to be careful about the setting of the interview so that you can try to capture um, the best sound possible with the technology you have and make sure that you remember to change your phone settings over to 182060 so that we get the highest resolution as possible in case we need to do a little adjustment. So um, if you're working as a team, you're going to have an opportunity to um, have one person be the photographer and one person be the reporter, uh, but you're going to have to interview someone else. So let's pretend you're working as a team. You have somebody like me who's doing the interview there would be the photographer and the reporter would be right there, very much next to each other, right? And so if the reporter is, is right in front of me, literally over that reporter's shoulder, but with a safe social distance and a mask of four feet, you would be able to stand there um, and shoot that interview while the reporter is uh, conducting the interview. And so that's really important that you're really close within uh, four to six feet uh, with masks if it's if it's masked. If you're not going to be masked, the reporter's going to need to be further than six feet away. I would prefer um, masks certainly of all of our students while conducting these interviews. Um, but if you're far away from the subject and you're at least six feet away, then you could get away with um, uh, be, uh, having the subject be maskless. So you want to be really careful. So I know I've been talking about this a bit. I want to show some examples of what a good piece of video looks like and so when it comes to interviews. So I'm going to share my screen and uh, show you a couple examples of what I think are good looking videos and uh, some that are less good. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to play each one, and then I'm going to pause and talk about it. I'll play each one and pause and talk about it. So here we go. So as you can see here, we're talking about framing, lighting, location, and mic placement. These are all the things that I just I tell the people I'm at capacity, and they'll look in, it's like holes, and it's like the bar isn't full, the bar isn't packed, but still, you know, there's 85 people in here, there's 85 people in here. So, I love this interview. Um, 
we have a good head and shoulder shot. We have um, the proper looking room. He's looking towards the reporter. We have taken advantage of the lighting in the background. Um, he is well lit on his face. They did need to add light in order to pull that off. Our cameras are very good with um, uh, this kind of lighting um, just without uh, adding a light, but in this case, it's helpful to hold a light down and to the right to bounce that light up towards his face instead of putting it on top of your camera and having it be a spotlight in his face. So that is something to come to anybody's going out. You know, if it feels overcrowded, if it looks overcrowded, and you don't know the exit where the exits are located, then you no, know, it's probably not a good idea to be. Okay, so let's talk about this interview. Um, good headroom, right? Maybe a little more headroom than you need. You could probably tilt down and pan to the right just a little bit. So, uh, but I still think it's a it's a well lit interview. Um, we can see him very clearly. Um, he has uh, the background in context with the interview, which is in his office, and so I like that interview quite a bit. Be in that place. This is the generation of the phone. And it, it, we can make this as easy as possible to, to get food and order food. That's the route that, the, that they're going to go. Okay, let me back it up just a smidge on that one. So looking at this one, what I really like about this is that even though he is backlit, it's within the context of the B-roll that was shot. Um, it's a little tighter as a head and shoulders, but there were some issues with the background facing the other direction, so they kind of were forced into that. I would be a little bit um, cautious here. I think his hat is in very sharp focus, but his eyes are in a little less focus. That said, I would be very happy if you could come back with that interview. In order of food, that's the route that, the, that they're going to go. This is a season of giving. Um, it's about the season of finding out the, what's important in your life. Okay, so I'm going to stop about this one. Look at it. Good headroom. Good looking room. Good sound, despite the fact that it's a very loud environment. So there's a lot of activity going on behind her. And um, and so the reporter in this case used a stick mic and um, stood off to the side. Now, if you're flying solo with our cameras, you would probably be better off to be standing on the opposite side of the camera so that you can simultaneously monitor your record as well as hold the stick mic in your left hand. Um, that way you could kind of both be shooting as a true MMJ, monitoring your recording, make sure all is well while you're conducting the, the recording, which means you would be very close to your camera and holding your stick mic and pointing it out towards the person you're interviewing. You may also notice that it's a really bright background. Uh, maybe the camera's a little bit below eye level. Maybe get it up a smidge more, but um, uh, she's well lit. And so the iris on her face, even though the, the background is light, um, is a good example. Um, Taking note, um, having a heart, and giving back to the community and realizing that it doesn't have to be something bright and large, even the gift of a smile. So a rotating menu based on what's available close to home. So South Carolina products. Oh my gosh. I love this interview. So fantastic, right? We've got head and shoulder shot, looking room in the correct uh, direction. He's actually many, many feet in front of that board. Um, it looks close, uh, but he's actually maybe six to 10 feet away from the menu board. Uh, but what I especially love is I love the fact that the dominant light is falling in on his face from the window at the front of his store. And so it feels really natural. Notice the mic placement for the lovelier. In this case, we're inside his business. It's a little more quiet. Um, so they, in this case, um, you always are gonna ask your subject if they would run the lavalier mic up inside their shirt and clip it. Um, if they have a jacket on, that would be different. But if they're wearing a t-shirt especially, they should run it up inside um, their shirt and then clip it to the, their collar or something along those lines. Um, definitely don't clip it to a necklace or anything like that. Um, we don't wanna see the cable 
in front of it. Um, so that needs to be hidden. And we want to make sure that that lavalier is on the left side or on the side of the looking room. So if he's looking left, that lav should actually be a little more over to the left. Um, if he is, if he was looking to the right, you would want it over to the right. But uh, so this is sort of right in the middle. We want that mic pointing towards their mouth so that we're gathering that. It could probably be two or three inches down further than where it is uh, if you had that opportunity. I might clip it lower instead of on the top of the collar, maybe come out through the buttonhole a little further down and clip it there. That are going to be fresh and seasonal and meet the requirements of a whole food diet. It is really essential being as small as I am. Obviously, you know, the goal. So I love, love, love this interview. View. It's in context with the story that was shot. It's head and shoulders, well framed. It maybe has a little extra looking room because there's activity going on behind him um, that suits the story. So this is kind of a little more artsy. Um, you could pan left and tighten up just a little bit probably, but I think it looks really good. Um, he does have a little bit of a hot spot on the top of his head because the sun conditions were changing when they were recording this. But the sound is good. We see both eyes. He's placed well looking towards the reporter. Was to have those clients and everybody else that wants what you're doing or making. That's one of them. I want to make sure that they have everything they need to have. Now, this interview, spectacular. They grabbed this woman for a little bit of natural sound on a story about childhood hunger in Richland County. And uh, they found that she was interacting so beautifully with the children as they came through the lunch line that they needed to mic her up for both ambient sound and for an interview. And so there were a bunch of Nats Pops from this B-roll, as well as a good quality interview. Um, head and shoulders, um, a little less so in this interview, because she was actually working with the children while doing the interview. And so you can see that it's a little more half and half, but because the, the reporter and the photographer working on this story was like, oh my gosh, I need to just jump out there and get that. And if you were flying solo and you need to clip a lab on her, even though it's loud, um, that would be something that would be good to try. Where are some headsets? Do your best to try to get the best sound that you can. But this is really nice. That child, you know, that's struggling to grasp a concept in Oh my gosh, what a beautiful interview. Beautiful interview. Takes advantage of the available lighting, head and shoulders, little bit of looking room, one inch above the head, one finger above the head. He's doing an interview in context with the story. We're not shooting the interview in a conference room or some office somewhere. We're like, hey, let's talk about it in the kitchen, right? Do you see the law of placement? very much hidden within there, but we're getting good sound out of it. Um, you might decide if you were in a louder environment that you would hold a stick mic. If you were an MMJ and shooting this alone, you could certainly be standing just a little bit over to the side, hand your stick mic out with your left hand, make sure to leave your right hand free in case you need to make any camera adjustments, and then stand there so that your subject can be looking directly Math at you. class or science class, you know, maybe that food, you know, provided the necessary uh, fuel uh, for them to, you know, their brains to function and absorb the information that they need to be successful. Being able to kind of spread that message that kids from different backgrounds should be able to. Okay, and again, what a beautiful interview. In this interview, she is well framed, well lit, quality depth of field good mic placement. It's a little tricky because it's almost pointing in the opposite direction of the looking room, but because she had a soft fabric on her uh, blouse, um, it was kind of tricky to place it. However, um, it's beautiful mic placement because we're not seeing the tools of our trade, which also means if you were using the stick mic, I don't want to see the stick mic in the interview. So even if you have to shoot it a little uh, wider so that you can stand further back, that might be good. Or we can tighten up the shot just a little bit in Adobe Premiere. But this is a beautiful interview. To eat together, and I have to worry about a cost of what that food should look like. Fan of football. Ryan Jefferson with Zeke. 
Okay, so this interview a little bit different. Got head and shoulders. It's a little more center because he's both talking to the reporter who's over to the right side of the camera here, and he's watching um, a football game on TV at a bar. And so um, it was a quick pickup interview. I think it's really great in the context of the story because we weren't going to ask him to get up and move while he's watching the game. So the reporter just sat right down with him and grabbed this interview real quick. I think it was a really nice looking interview. Um, it is up against a wall, but in this case, we didn't want to move him. You know, they get a chance to FaceTime with their family members and get a chance to catch up, but when it comes down to connecting with their pets, we don't really have that same opportunity. Everything that this building is made of, we make right here. Okay, so I want to come back to this interview, right? Doing an interview with the dog in the interview. If it seems appropriate to do that, by all means, come out wider, grab something creative later in the semester. For this one, head and shoulders, keep it simple, right? The next interview. Yeah, connecting with their pets. We don't really have that same opportunity. Everything that this will. Okay, so love this interview. She's a hand talker, just like me. And they did the interview on the production line. And look at the mic placement. The mic placement is on the left side of her blouse so that as she gestures behind her, you can keep that sound coming. So when her mouth turns to the left, the mic is going to follow along with her instead of her talking away from the mic. Very important when it comes to law of placement. Um, also, just, I mean, this interview pops off the screen. It's really good. The building is made of, we make right here. They have wonderful people, everybody. So technically, this looking room is correct, but look how different it is to have this interview here versus the preceding interview. So those are things that we want to be contemplating. Um, I'm going to also now, let me stop sharing that real quick, and then I'm going to jump on over to some things that we would want to do where a couple of examples, maybe just a few examples of SOTs that demonstrate how we need to work on these. And I'm not going to talk, I'm not going to share the audio on this one this time. We're going to talk about some of the things that can go wrong with an interview. Two important right. trained staff members. So, who can help um, parents and caregivers who are working. This is a case where the photographer was thinking more about the background than the foreground and thought, oh my gosh, this would be great. There's this great giant animal from where the wild things are, and she's a librarian, and she's talking about where the wild things and reading for children. But the problem is it's so distracting to us that we're really not focusing on her. It's also half and half. I'd much rather place that interview where there's a row of books back behind her. Or she's, you know, um, in a place where the books are in the in the background. Working with children who aren't reading on grade level. If we can get people to understand that. All right. Oh my gosh, we put this guy right up against a fence, literally, yeah? Pull him 20 feet away from that fence. Pull out a little bit, uh, give us a little bit more space, tilt down, pan left, pull him away from the background. They're diligent as far as keeping their property maintained, eliminating any kind of extra sources of breeding sites, and the mosquito population will take care of itself. What allows them to have a voice is their right. vision so and their, their ideas all, and this their one is moving um, commitment going. to. Oh my gosh, it's a dark background, really kind of boring background. So we want to be able to hear her. We've got a ton of looking room. We've got way too much room around her. Maybe if you tightened up a little bit, it would be okay. But also the dominant light is falling on her face in a kind of weird way. Uh, take her outside. Get her somewhere else where you have a, a richer background, or at the very least, tilt down, pan right, zoom in just a little bit so that we can get rid of all of that wasted space all around her. You don't want to do that in the edit. You want to shoot as clean as possible the first time around if you can. Do um, the, the work that is ahead. I mean, that's great because... Again, look at that background, right? Very exciting. <laughs> so get her somewhere else. Uh, put her out in the middle of the entryway of the building. Um, take her outside. Do something uh, that might, even in the hall, with a with a hall running down behind her in her office space, somewhere where we can focus a little more on her. I'd also say that the camera's a little bit too high. Here, I can get it down. 
tighten up at the very least you're going to tighten this up uh, eliminate some of the headroom eliminate some of the looking room get it down closer to eye level but uh, better yet move it somewhere else especially this time of year when the christmas season arrives they can spend for themselves and their families but they can also give generously if they choose we are trying to you know get these kids excited i would say this is another example where you put the person immediately on the background that they are um associated with it's a really it's almost close to you know to what you want but again the camera level is too high so we need to get the camera lens down to eye level and we need to take her 10 to 15 feet away from the background or find a different way uh, to shoot that because um, uh, in this case, um, it's just a distraction. We, we feel right on top of her and we're looking down on her, which is uh, making the audience feel uncomfortable. It's like a power move. And uh, so we want it at eye level and, um, and move that to a different location when they're young, then third grade, so hopefully they'll be able to pass third grade. Part of being a good being, a good human being is, is making... Okay, so this has a bit of the opposite problem, right? Uh, we are interviewing Mr. Lattimore, and he, um, we're shooting up at him, right? I know he's tall, but we can pull those tripod legs, extend them all the way, and then pull them in some so that the tripod um, lifts up a little bit taller to get to eye level. And even if you're short, even if you're five foot, then you can still use the LCD screen to tilt down to you. He'll look down at you a little bit, but we don't want to be looking up at him if we can help it. Um, also, he seems a little soft, and oh my gosh, you know, we're shooting right up into the sky behind him. We're able to see him, we're able to hear him, but it's not an ideal interview. Making sure when you have the opportunity, which you do every single day, give back and, and, and be kind to somebody else. Okay, and then uh, real quick, we're going to so talk about location. Assessment at each building. Again, don't interview this person right up against a background, against a wall, against a window. Um, it ranges, there's five different categories, um, depending on people, um, on the size, the population of the building, how big the building is. Also, there's too much looking room, so pan left, tighten up, tilt up just a little bit. Headroom looks good here, but once you lose some of that looking room, you'll have to readjust. Um, past incident, historical wise, I remember like waking up in a hospital. I understand this gentleman has a couch in his room, fine, but there's no reason he needs to be sitting on that couch. You notice all of the dominant light is coming in from the left of this screen, and then it's about a half and half shot. Um, I would I would much rather you find a kitchen chair, find a chair, put it in front of uh, with the with the light coming in from the sliding glass doors or the patio or wherever that's coming in from. Um, turn entirely his whole body, sit him on a chair with that light falling on his face with the rest of the apartment in the background. Don't shoot him up against a wall or a window. Um, it just is a distraction. Um, good mic placement, though. I all my family around you know, just waking up. Like, and tossed the nine hours there. I kept out a few hours there. It's just a sign of the times for everyone, <laughs> whether you're what. Same thing. Uh, got too much looking room right up against a wall. She's with Bite Squad. Let's take her outside. Let's put her up against a car out in the world. They're, they're delivering. So also because she's a darker skinned female and the background is super light, um, I feel like the interview on her face um, could definitely use uh, to iris down, or I'm mean, sorry, iris up so that we can see more of her face, but that's gonna make the background darker, or darker. so we really wanna, um, or lighter, we really wanna just take this outside and put it in a different setting. Y2K or millennial? It's just a sign of the times and the way things are evolving. Seeing a diverse student government, seeing diverse people in the university. So, really important interview. She's wearing a red shirt. You stuck her up against a red wall in a dark part of the union, right? That is just not going to help us pay attention to what she's saying because we're distracted by what we're seeing. So, uh, also the law of placement is in the wrong place. If she's looking uh, over towards 
uh, the opposite direction, that should be the side that the lavalier is placed on. So take advantage of that light. Turn her around. Don't stick people up in a corner or against a wall. The ambassadors, um, seeing you know, um, diverse um, resident mentors, orientation leaders, I think that all of those things are going to make a difference. We're the youngest county in South Carolina. So this guy, he's, he's pretty good. We could still get the the uh, camera up a little bit farther, and I would like to get the reporter a little closer to the camera in this case. Um, so actually, this was a one-man band shoot, so you need to stand closer to the uh, camera, and um, uh, that way he's not looking quite so profile. So workforce is the key to it. Also, I think they might have used a lob. I'm not sure. It's a pretty loud background, and uh, I'm having a little bit of difficulty hearing him. So if you're in a situation where you have an opportunity to choose the lob or the stick, something like this, you want to use the stick mic. You want to get it up as close to his mouth as possible without seeing it in the shot. I'm more likely to have unstable relationships, which can be dangerous in terms of feeling... So I really like the concept of this interview. I like it being outside. It's actually really well lit. We have a bit of, of half and half, um, and I think that camera lens is a little high. So I would tighten up the shot so that we have less looking room so that she takes up two thirds of the frame. Get the camera lens down a little bit and put the lavalier. Actually, I'd probably skip the lav because there's lots of sound of people walking by and the crunching of leaves. I'd probably use a stick mic here, but if you're going to use the lav, make sure that you're putting it on the correct side, which would be the opposite of what we're seeing here of self-worth um, and uh, risky behaviors later on in life. Well, I'm just excited about it becoming a destination. So, I love the look of this interview. Absolutely beautiful. It was actually shot with somebody's DSLR. Just a beautiful interview. But where is the reporter? The reporter is standing while the mic or the camera is at eye level, but the reporter is standing up. If you are interviewing someone who's sitting, you need to bring your body down to eye level with that person. If you're interviewing a little person, a child, and they are sitting on the floor, you need to sit down on that floor. You don't want to be standing above your interview subject. It's uncomfortable for the people at home. So even though the law of placement is pretty good, um, in this case, they actually ran the law of cable up behind his shirt and then through his collar and clipped it there. It worked out okay. Sound was fine. Really sharp, lovely, blurry depth of feel. Very nice, but um, he's looking up at the reporter, so it's a distraction. Once again, um, you know, it hasn't always been this way here. This has been a lively spot before. Uh, you know, it did kind of have a bit of a downturn, but Hopefully, if they're doing this right, uh, it'll get back to being its own little destination. And you can really keep someone All right. healthy just by simply giving Same them thing a, here. a month's supply. She's looking up at the reporter. She's up against a wall. It's dark. We're not taking advantage of the dominant light in the room. Uh, you're using a lav in a, in a busy place. I think, you know, this is something we want to Something that costs $6 to do, maybe. Um, it makes a world of difference. All right, I'm finally. hopeful that by introducing more positive lifestyle behaviors at Mrs. the college Hastidis. age, that people will realize that, you know, the longer you lead a healthy lifestyle, the longer your life will be. You know, we've all been in that situation where this just happened. You go Again, dominant light falling in a weird place behind her. Uh, you can see the shadow of her face in front of her, on, so you can tell right away you're not taking advantage of that. So actually shoot her with the work that the women are doing behind her. Turn her around. Uh, this is a really interesting story about the homeless period project. Very interesting, but a bit of a distraction. Um, it looks like she's in gulag being uh, interviewed by um, someone who's holding her captive with a light in her face. So uh, let's, uh, let's avoid that. In the restroom, my mother knows just like, hey, girl. So I just think a, a lot of it has to do with the embarrassment of it, and people just don't really think about homeless women not having these products. The more that folks use Columbia, the more people Again, you, you know, so that she's super sharp. That we get new air service. She's super sharp, but she's got shadows on her face, shadows on her neck. I'd skip that.
this person is backlit and uh, this in blue. This person is backlit and it's half and half. This person, I can hardly see at all. Super blown out in the background. Reorganize that, relocate it. And then let's talk real quick about mic placement. Don't ever hand over the microphone to somebody. You need to stay in control of your microphone the entire time. Um, just hold it uh, out to that person and tell them you're gonna hold on to your mic. That's especially true now when we don't wanna be sharing our mic. Uh, we wanna make sure to wipe it down. Um, I think that in this case, the mic was just really far away from her, plus she's dark and, uh, you know, this is just not a good interview. And let's talk about focus problems. This interview was focused on the Toys for Tots box, not on the person we're interviewing, so that's an issue. This person, in this case, this is a beautiful interview where they're interviewing the mom with the kid on her lap. Let me play it for just a second kind of menial, I'll you know, time out or um, take something away. Okay, I'm going to back that up again because what you'll notice is that interview starts out really sharp and beautiful. Well, it starts out sharp and beautiful, but when the child, see look how beautiful it is there, but when the child behind her starts to move towards the Christmas tree, we, and I'll play it again, um, we see the focus shift. That is what's wrong with staying in autofocus. If you use manual focus on her face, even if that child is moving around in the background, this interview will stay in focus. And oh, isn't that so cute, that little baby looking up at her mom. We've hidden the lav mic. So much to like about this interview. It's real pretty. It's in context with the story. Um, we like it very much, but look what happens when the kid behind her starts to move because the photographer was in autofocus. Menial, I'll you know, do time out or um, yep. take something away. So that's a distraction. And here are a few other that's distractions. Do not. And you're saddled with a huge amount of debt that you're having to pay off. You what? Why do we need to see her jacket on a pile of things in the behind her? And then if you look to the left, I see the corner of her um, uh, computer in the screen. Those are distractions. Don't frame up the background. Frame up the person in the context of the background. You just paid to go to law school. So, you know, you're forking over a mortgage payment's worth of money a month. Start um, pre-treating, as we call it. A few days before the uh... horizontal and vertical lines in the background, sunglasses, shadows on faces. These are the sorts of the things that we're going to gonna avoid. You know, get... So I'm just going to wrap up with you today to let you know these are sort of some of the things that you want to be thinking of when you're out shooting your next shooting assignment. Shooting assignment number three. It is up on Blackboard for you to take a look at. Um, and the due dates are, are going to be listed in the course schedule. So you'll be able to find that. Um, I might say if you are doing this uh, during the fall of 2020, we have a big election coming up. So um, when you read those assign that assignment, and I say I really don't care what people say, if you want to practice your reporting skills, go out and get an interview with somebody and ask them what they want to hear the candidates talk about in this election. What are the issues that matter to them? What are the things that they would like to know more about? Uh, what are some of the things that they wish the media would cover? Um, uh, more in the mainstream press as opposed to what they're covering today, uh, what stories are being left out. That might be an opportunity to practice your reporting skills, even though right now what we're really focusing on are your shooting skills, and soon it'll be your editing skills. Uh, so I look forward to seeing you again soon. I hope you guys are doing well, and I will uh, look forward to seeing your next shooting assignment. All right. Thanks so much.